Hello and welcome into the first episode of the new Game Night, now on the Paladin Network. I'm your host, Pearson Fowler, and alongside me today is WCCP's own Chris Adele. Chris, how you doing? Great. Pearson, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. So today we're going to talk about a little bit of an NFL preview. The 49ers, the Broncos, losing some significant pieces to their team. How well equipped are they going to be for the upcoming season? We're going to talk about the firestorm that has been Michael Sam's life over the last few months. But first, we're going to start with college football. Chris, it's approaching week two. We've had a lot of time to think about everything that happened in week one. There were a lot of shaky performances from teams that we didn't expect it. Alabama, Florida State, UCLA, South Carolina all struggled in their opening games. And a lot of teams like LSU, Texas A&M looked really strong in their opening games. So what can we take away from week one? First part of this question, I'll just go ahead and ask you, which team jumped out? Which team impressed you the most after week one? I think Georgia impressed me the most, honestly. Out of every team, I mean... You're expecting Florida State to blow out Oklahoma State. You're expecting Alabama to roll over West Virginia. Georgia, tight game at half, 21-21, against a great Clemson team. I mean, Clemson, everyone's been talking a lot about their defense. Maybe offense, they had some worries coming into the preseason. I know from working at the station that people are real worried about Cole, Sc or Cole Stout versus Deshaun Watson, who's going to start at quarterback. But Clemson... Uh, you know, they came out strong, but Georgia, and especially Todd Gurley, came out and just rolled in the second half and really made a statement, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Georgia looked good late, and it, and it seemed like we got about what we expected from Clemson. As you mentioned, there were some questions along the offense. With the defense was supposed to be the strong point, Georgia ended up uh, running away with that one. Also, LSU coming back late again was, was against Wisconsin, a team that the personnel didn't really seem to lend itself to a team that could come back, rather a team that should hang on to a lead, or rather get a lead and then hang on to it, you know, burn out the clock with those talented running backs. They're big in the trenches. What do you think of LSU after the first week? I think they showed a lot of problems with quarterback. Like, are they going to be able to have a quarterback who can make plays consistently? Obviously, they've got a great defense, and uh, they've got a great running game. But the question of that game, why did Wisconsin stop, run, like, stop running the ball? Like, Wisconsin, I think they would have won that game if they had run the ball. They, they just – Melvin Gordon, I mean, he just makes plays every down. Last year uh, in the Capital One Bowl against South Carolina – yeah, you know, Wisconsin was dominating that game. They're running, 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 and South Carolina had no answers. I think that's the same thing that would have happened with LSU. You start throwing the ball, start making mistakes. LSU had the chance to come back. Wisconsin may have lost this game, but they're a team that if they control the tempo of that game and they don't go away from what they're all about, I think you could see them do really well. LSU, though, with Alabama not performing well, I definitely think that they could be a team to win the SEC West. Yeah, your point about Wisconsin is very interesting, and it's sort of the flip side of what happened with the Georgia game where Todd Gurley only got four carries in the first half and then ran over Clemson in the second half. Melvin Gordon had an excellent first half against LSU, and then they didn't go to him nearly as much in the second half. All right, so the second part of this question, Chris, again, we talked about a lot of teams, Florida State only winning by one possession, UCLA struggled against Virginia, South Carolina got blown up by Texas A&M. I want you to give me on a scale of 1 to 10 the panic meter or what the panic meter should be for Florida State UCLA and South Carolina. I think with all four of these teams, the expectation is to win the conference and to also make the playoffs. So I'm going to kind of judge my panic meter off of how realistic it is now to reach those goals. So I'm going to start with South Carolina. So at the game, awful performance by the defense. I think there's a lot of question marks there. Is Mike Davis going to be healthy enough to carry this offense? I mean, this season was built off of Mike Davis and making, you know, being able to run every game, you know, 100, 150 yards, honestly, like he did at the beginning of last year. Dalen Thompson's not equipped to make the plays Connor Shaw was. Those wide receivers have talent, but they're inexperienced. I think a six, that defense, worst I've seen in years. I mean, 52 points at home is absolutely ridiculous 680 yards the most ever given up in the history of 511 yards given up to a quarterback that has never really played in college football awful i think you got a six there there's a lot of problems that honestly might not even be fixed because ecu same kind of offense they're going to pass the ball a lot and they're going to pass it well then we've got georgia coming to town so if i was a gamecock i'd be real worried right now all right now florida state 
played Oklahoma State this year. They were the unanimous number, or nearly unanimous number one pick in the preseason polls. Everyone's expected them to make the playoffs comfortably, and most people are projecting them to win this first year of the college playoff. They only won by seven points against Oklahoma State. Was this an impressive performance from Oklahoma State, or should people in Tallahassee be concerned? I think it was an impressive uh, performance by Oklahoma State, and I also think what is uh, um, Florida State's road to reaching the ACC championship, beating a Clemson team in Tallahassee. I think, don't worry if you're in uh, Florida State, maybe a one and a half, two on the panic meter. I won't say one because they didn't play up to expectations, but I think a pretty easy schedule. I mean, not much to worry about to get into Atlanta, and then you just win the ACC championship and you're easily into the playoff. All right, one more I'm going to ask you about because we're up against the clock here. UCLA struggled against perennial losers, uh, Virginia, and UCLA is a team with a lot of expectation coming into this season. They were preseason number seven, and I know you can't read too much into these preseason rankings as we're finding out after week one. So what's your takeaway? What's the panic meter right now if you're UCLA? I'm going to put a four or five. Uh, Virginia's obviously a cellar dweller almost every year. But they're coming into, you know, the year that makes or breaks Mike London. You know, if Virginia does well this year, he can keep his job. If not, he's out. I met Mike London uh, at ACC Media Days this summer. I think he's a coach that's got a great philosophy. He really, you know, he thinks that uh, the family aspect, the team aspect is more important than maybe winning every football game. And I think a team like Virginia is going to buy into that. They're going to see – their head coach that really respects them and treats them well, he's in danger of losing his job. And I think they came out with a lot of fire against uh, UCLA, and their defense played very well. And I think Virginia is going to be a little bit better than you would expect. Not a great team, but UCLA scoring three defensive touchdowns is great. But they really need to protect Brett Hundley if he's going to win a Heisman, if they're going to make the playoff. All right, well, that's all we have time for this segment. Come back on the other side. We'll be talking about